Good morning, I'm Lynn and welcome to another beautiful fall day at Utopia Farms. We've got lots of chores to do so let's get started. These guys have already been out at pasture and they've all just they're all just coming in now even though it's early in the morning and the first thing they do when they come back in is see how the ewes are doing in there. You always got to make sure. You know, these are males. And these are the gawkers. This barn is so quiet now because all the lambs are out of here. And the, so we keep the lights off so it stays pretty dark because it's an old barn. And this is Tom's spot in the feeder right by his food bowl. So this morning in the creep area with the older lambs, everybody's been eating on this side, but enough of them are eating creep feed now that he puts them on the other side as well. And you can see that both sides are full already. Hi girls. We got a whole line of girls here. We got the boys at the back, the big ones, and the little ones are the ewe lambs. Oh, you're not number nine. No, you're not. You're someone else just as cute. Some of these rams, it looks like they have a little bit of a dirty bum. Um, it's nothing serious. Nobody's uh, got real scoots. So we're just going to leave it be. They were treated with baycocks and they usually just get over it by themselves. But we do watch that to make sure that nobody's got a case that they're not overcoming on their own. There's number nine. Hey, buddy. You're such a sweetheart. And we've got a lamb here that's obviously eating at the feeder with the moms. She's kind of a sloppy eater. Hi, you're very clever though eating with the moms. Every day we always have a lamb who wants to lie in this spot. They get their head under the gate and they rest their head on that board there, but their body's in the pen and they always look like they're stuck, but they're not. It seems to be a favored position. Every day I seem to catch someone here. Silly lambs. I was complaining yesterday to Arnie that um, the pathway to the new field was full of thistles and that's why the ewe lambs weren't wanting to go down it. So I told them to hook on to the bush hog. And you know what they say, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. He told me it took 15 minutes to hook the bush hog on, but I think it took them about two minutes. And all this activity out here is making the ewes very curious as to what's going on. Okay, buddy's decided to help with uh, doing bales today. <laughs> so, buddy is now, I don't know if we can see him. Yeah. Oh, he jumped down. He jumped all the way up to the top of the bales. And now he's in the tree. He's always having fun. Okay, we just finished feeding a uh, round bale to these guys now. This was the bale that Buddy tried to leap onto. Well, he did leap onto it as a boost to get on top of the tractor, which was a boost to get on top of the bales, which was a boost to get into the tree. Silly cat. Here's all the boys waiting at the gate. It's time to feed them. Oh, and now they're all fighting, you see? And that's killer. Oh, Arnie, Cash just did a killer hit. See, uh, right now, this is what I meant about excitement with rams when they get rambunctious. Uh, they're anticipating that feed coming and that's when they act stupid. So that's another time when you have to be really careful in a ram pen when, when you're feeding uh, food. 
because, uh, yeah, hams at this time of year especially um, are really ridiculous. Arnie, want to stop that? Mm. Now we got a real mob fighting here. So I'm I'm really guessing that the word rambunctious came from this kind of behavior. Normally you put the food out and they uh, go straight to the trough. But um, they're right at the breeding age now. They're not breeding. Um, they're establishing their dominance and they all want to have a piece of the other one. So you have to break them up and uh, Food is usually always a good distraction. But yeah, um, they can crack their skulls open. Uh, we had uh, Suffolk Ram, his uh, skull got cracked right open once. We've had them um, hit uh, Ram it in their side. And um, I guess just stop their heart because that's what happened to our Jordan Ram. And that happened at feeding too. He was in with all his best buddies and running to the trough. They were doing that kind of behavior. And I guess one knocked him in the side and killed him outright. So it's one of the unfortunate things about rams. People could help us a little bit. Which people? Anybody could help us a little bit by taking some of these rams off their hands. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So the ewes get the same ration minus the added limestone. And now that they've had their little bit of grain, you can see it's hardly any. It's just enough just to keep their body condition up and uh, it's, there's protein in it, so just to add to their growth. But now we're going to... Oh, jeez. Ter terrible, terrible cracking. You can hear it. You know who it is. It's the, the Dorset start it. But the Dorset start it, I find. That, oh, that's killer. But I swear, um, Klon Cash started that one, and I think uh, Klondike started the other one. But the Suffolk want to finish it, eh? And are they fighting breed to breed? Like, are they? Is it blacks against whites? Do you ever see the blacks fighting with the blacks and the whites with the whites? Like, I don't know. But they're being silly these days. Everybody's been okay. You're not fighting, are you, Casanova? Because you're a lover. A little bit of warm, huh? Some of them are more lovers than the others. But I definitely see Cash and Klondike in fights all the time. And there's one of the, um, yeah, well, Killers from Felon, who's a real docile sheep. And I see one of my gladiator rams in here fights with the other rams quite a bit, too. Rambunctious. I'll have to look up the definition, but it's gotta come from rams fighting. Okay, so I've got the Oxford Canadian Dictionary of Current English so here. According to this, rambunctious is just boisterous. But then we have other things like ramming. That's uh, putting a lot of pressure down or beating it down or driving it in with heavy blows, strike violently, push a bill through legislature, ram homes, um, distress forcefully. So um, all to do with ram behavior. And uh, that's what we're seeing today in the barn. Yeah, Klondike. Klondike's been fighting a lot. But I saw Cash doing it too. See, look, his ear, as soon as the ram comes out, he's... Oh, but, but they recognized each other. Hey! hey, hey. hey. Yeah, they... See, did you see his ears go back? I don't know if I got it on the camera. 
but it was like that that's like a challenge right away like the ears go back I, I got my eye on you I'm gonna get you and it seems to be killer a lot and I do think Killer's doing it because uh, I think he was on death's door with those stones and he was feeling terrible. And you know how when you get really, really sick, like you had a bout of pneumonia or something, and then you recover and then all of a sudden you feel like you have renewed life? I feel like that's what Killer's doing because he was always a quiet ram. You're quiet, aren't you? Yeah, luckily they don't do it to us at all. But boy, they sure got a pick on for... Oh, they're going to do it again. And it's your guy again with Klondike. Our two show rams who should know each other the best. Look at, look at... Klondike watches the black ones come up and his ears go right back. Oh, bugger. These little guys here don't fight. You guys are smart enough to know that you're a little smaller and you better stay out of the fray. Actually, this guy here. Oh, he's panting. Was he fighting? Because he's a lover, this guy. Oh, look at these two are going to go out and fight now. Oh, Monster and Klondike. Oh, and he's got blood on his head, you see. We don't want... Yeah, all our best ones have to fight. Hi, hi. Don't fight, okay? Calvin, no fighting, all right? No fighting. Yeah, I just, uh, we're just going to have to close our eyes to the rams. Come on, you don't look like a fight. Oh, you are the fighter. Come on, you guys, be nice. Be nice. Be really, really nice out there, you guys. No fighting. We'll be really angry if we have to scoop one up in the, in the skid steer today. That's it? Well, is that Hellboy? Yeah, that, is that the Hell, yeah, that's the Hellboy one. This ram back here, he doesn't want to pay attention to that fighting that's going on. He stays in the pen, always last out. He's way more concerned about the ewes noticing him. Hi. I guess Big Butthead comes from the Rams doing that too. Because we got a lot of Big Buttheads in there right now. So I looked for Butthead. There is no Butthead in the dictionary, but it was online. And it doesn't refer to um, being silly and hitting with your head. Um, but butt out kind of has something to do with that and butting means to hit with your head or horns but um, butt head actually refers to your backside but definitely the rams are butt heads today okay so we let the ewe lambs out and I wanted Arnie to that's the pasture I want to have him bush hog a path through the lambs went that way, but they kind of stopped before the gate because there's a whole bunch of thistles there, and I think that bothers them. So I opened this gate, but they'd already run through, so I don't know if they're going to run back or try to figure out that gate. Oh, the tractor's making them, uh, putting a little more pressure on them to go through the fence, so they're going through there. And on their way back, they'll have a nice cleared path as we uh, get rid of the weeds. Our little Shetland's out there too. She's still limping a little bit, but she's a lot better as well. I think she just hurt her foot. I don't think it was arthritis or foot rot or scald or anything like that. There, she's going through to the pasture as well. There she goes. Sheep like to travel on paths as flocks. If you go into a pasture with sheep, you'll uh, see well-worn paths in the pasture. And those are the routes they usually take in and out every day. Um, so when you clear a little path like this, so 
when you clear a path like this, the sheep are much more likely to use it because um, they like the, the path thing. So if you um, are putting them in a new area or you want to direct them to go in a certain area, just taking um, a bush hog or something and clearing a pathway uh, is like a lure for them and they will be much more likely to travel that than to tramp through something that's overgrown and make their own path. So um, I'm guessing now they're going to go to the field a lot more easier now that the prickles are gone and uh, they can see where they're going. I think they don't like to go in uh, long grasses as well because um, there could be a predator hiding in there. It might be an instinctual thing. But they're all out there now. And I think they'll be happy to find that they've got a path to come home on. And for those of you who like to follow our Shetland, she's 17 years old, almost. I think she's 17 uh, in the spring. She's out there with them now too, grazing. So while he's out here, instead of just leaving a path, you don't really want to leave weeds uh, growing to seed in your paddocks. Um, so he's just gonna cut all the heads down and hopefully depress any weeds in here. We got clouds today, but we still have extremely warm temperatures. Way, way above normal. Thought we better check on Glad. They just came in from the field, so they're a little hot and panting. He's right there in the middle. Hi Glad, how you feeling? I'll step in and see how he is. Here comes. Hi, Glad. Come on. Come on. Your foot's still a little sore. He's still favoring it a little bit, but he's definitely putting more pressure on it. Ah, oh, buddy. You know, I'm really not liking you new guys. They're a little too familiar and they come at me a little too fast. Glad, how you doing? You can see the swelling is down on his foot anyway. I couldn't find anything in between his toes. Because I feel like he looks like he almost does have something stuck in there. But um, it was all dried up and I think it's just a matter of time now. But he's definitely better. Glad. Hi Glad. How you doing? Are you feeling okay? Are you feeling okay? Oh, you're a little sore still. Yeah, you guys are a little... Gimli, have you been fighting with the new guy? It looks like it. You got a little sore on your head. And that's a sure sign because he's got a sore on his head too. Look at that. Him and Quincy. They can't deny it. Both of them have red heads. Not glad. You're not a fighter. Hi, who are you? You're nice too. How are you feeling, Glad? Yeah, you didn't like it. You don't like it when your foot's sore. Hi, Gimme. Why were you fighting with them? It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. Hi, Hannibal. Hi. You're really nice. I can see that. Hey, buddy. Hi, Jed. How you doing? How you doing, Jed? Hi. You're a nice boy, too. Oh, my goodness. Yes, you're really nice. How did you get to be so nice? That's because your dad was really nice. Yes, he was. Jed is, uh... Remember I told you that we keep back a son of uh, our favorite rams all the time? Jed came from one of our favorite rams, Dexter, who was a homebred ram of ours, who was here for a long time. And now Jed has taken his place. Hi, General. Hi, how you doing? Oh, you're such a nice boy, too. Yeah, you are. All you guys are nice. Yeah, glad. Hi, buddy. We're with Glad. And I guess this is how we'll say goodbye today.
We checked on his foot. He is still limping, but he's better than he was before, and the swelling has definitely gone down. Hey, Glad. So, from me and Glad, thanks for watching. Hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Friends. Bye for now.